Nope. What? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Jump uh, headshot. Yeah. Precise gunplay, unfortunately. My name is Jules. I'm a Radiant player. If you're enjoying this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If you're interested in coaching yourself or want a chance to win free coaching, be sure to watch the end of the video for details. Other than that, enjoy the video. Do you like indie games? Well, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Vox Pop. Vox Pop is a peer-to-peer -peer game distribution and development platform. Vox Pop wants to help developers and content creators prop each other up. Developers set aside a percentage of their revenue for incentives, which are paid out to each and every person who had a hand in that sale. In other words, Vox Pop can help pay the developers more and also provide a share to the content creators who help popularize these lesser known titles, thus giving more resources to those that deserve it and increasing longevity of new games. This is also the best time to hop onto Vox Pop as they have a new exclusive indie game called Outer Terror. Outer Terror is an action-packed horror game where the objective is to fend off never-ending cosmic creatures. If you enjoy titles such as Vampire Survivor and any bullet hell or shoot 'em ups Outer Terror will be the game for you. You can pick from 10 different characters with different abilities and play through 5 different chapters. There are so many creative ways to play as you can combine your weapons and abilities for stronger ones. You can find out more at VoxPopGames.com or you can check out their Twitter at VoxPopGames. And a huge thank you to VoxPop for sponsoring this video. Other than that, enjoy the video. Hello? Yo. You ready to pop off? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this one. So, okay, so you're currently sending one. So 124 damage per round. Okay, so damage per round is a little bit on the lower end. KD also, but your headshot percentage is really good, actually. And looks like you're maining chamber. I see you have Jet, Reyna. Do you just play like chamber and then duelists or? Generally, yes. I see. Okay, okay. Because you have low damage per rounds. That could be numerous things. It's hard to say like right away. But if you had to guess, what would you say is your biggest weakness? Positioning and decision making. That'll definitely do it. It could also be like because of, you know, our positioning and decision making. Like we're not also playing around our teammates enough, right? So that it, that could also be a thing. And cool. I'm excited to see exactly what's going on. Only she can call me daddy. What side do you guys want to go? Oh, nice. I love I love uh trying to get them talking by saying stuff like that. Uh, Rainer, Vayner, which one of you guys want to fly? These are really good psychological tricks. This is a this is great aim manipulation, by the way. <laughs> these are very good things to do if you're your teammates. So just by asking these okay. questions, we we forced our teammates to group up, hit a site, and we we have Phoenix or Reyna flashing us out. Right? The psychological aspect of this is insane. This should be studied in Harvard. Wait for flash. So one thing we probably could have done there, I like the idea that we kind of got our teammates to kind of group up and you kind of forced Phoenix or Reyna to, to buy a flash there. It was really good, really good stuff to do. One thing though, when we are pushing in, just be careful. We don't really, if we get mollied off, we just chill, right? We could just yeah. wait it out. Running through that is just the death wish. Like we're just going to get cooked in that thing. It's fine if our teammates are kind of separated. We're just kind of leave them, leave them to die or leave them alone. As long as we're kind of valuing our life a little bit more. So we're grouping up towards B. Wait for KO to make a play here. Push up B. Yeah, just chill, just chill. KO should get the first kill if, if she can. Uh. It was a good try, it was a good try. In that situation, so usually when you have like a flank like that and you guys are kind of stuck in an area, it's just better to let that person who's flanking make the first play. Use your teammate's position to your advantage, right? So what I would have done, I would have just literally chilled. I would have waited for KO to get a kill. As soon as KO gets a kill, that's when we can kind of like push out and then look for more. So we gotta be careful here. We do have a gun and they're probably at a gun disadvantage, we don't really want to be giving away a free vandal, right? So, just playing a little bit careful. Okay. Throw a TP down. Peaks aren't bad. Nice. A shot. Nice job. Good rounds. Good rounds. This was good. This is a live session. Good trade. One seven. So before even like pushing out there, I probably would have thrown the second TP, right? So then like after getting the Astra kill, maybe that's a good decision to TP out, right? Like take that pick and then fall reposition. I think like pushing even more that our team like really close behind might not have been the best. What the fuck was that? 
the jump uh, headshot. Yeah. Precise gunplay, unfortunately. I'd be molding. All good. No worries. So one thing too. Okay, I like the play. I actually like the play to push in there. The only thing is I think we were making a little bit too much noise. You know what I mean? Like when we first yeah. pushed in there. I would just walk. I mean, obviously, you know, he was just jump shooting and killed us. So, but before then, right? I, I think we could just be a little bit more quiet with our aggression there. I like that you're still giving comms even though you're dead, right? This is very important to do. Uh, a lot of people, usually they die and they just kind of like AFK open up TikTok, right? But making sure that you're still kind of relaying information, but you're not telling people how to play. This is very, very good practice to get into. So I do like that a lot. Okay. These are good. Okay. okay, all good. We just got caught in that. Okay. I see the positioning thing and the decision making. I kind of get it now. So the idea is you want to kind of take space because when things drop, we have no control now, right? We don't have art. We don't have back. We don't have flower control. This is the problem. Uh, yeah. Okay, so one thing I did notice, like, it's it's what's going back to what you were saying about the positioning thing, right? So, like, after you kind of yeah. pushed in a site there, we kind of just stuck around close site. After walls drop, we just TP out, right? So, the idea with pushing into site on attack side is very important, like, to try and take space somewhere. So, whether that's, you see where they pinged? Like, whether you take back halls there, like dugout, secret, or you go into flowers, or you go into art, right? You just need some form of control there, and taking space is what you want to try and do. So, either try and clear one of those out. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to win if you only have main control and it's like a 5v5 retake or 4v4 retake, right? So yeah, so we've been going with our team like almost every round. We've just been like five executing stuff. So it's very easy for them to kind of retake and rotate. What we can start doing is lurking a little bit, right? And especially when we're playing chamber, we want to start doing that. So find out like where your team's kind of going and then just kind of try and work the other side of the map a little bit. I might flash this. Yeah. Do, do, do. Nice, good trade. Uh, group up with your team if you can. I would just group up, yeah. So I was worried there that we were going to keep pushing, right? So that's a mistake that we want to avoid. It's a 3v3, we get a pick. We don't have to force it. We don't have to force it and continue taking space because they know where they are. They're gonna try and trade. And the idea is you want to just group up with your team after you get these picks and stuff, right? Ah, uh, this is sketchy how we cleared this. We do have good control now though, but I didn't like how we cleared that. Oh, he was ready for that. That's fine. Idea was it was good there though, right? You wanted to kind of push into dugout. Oh, that's so tough. There's one B link. Cut across. There's two long, I think. Yeah, and they have sheriff care. Uh, yeah, I think there was, uh, like, at the start, when they Astra smoked the cross, it's so hard to kind of, like, hold that afterwards. I probably wouldn't have peaked such an aggressive angle because that smoke allows them to just cross the for free, right? And then once you take, once you cross, like, behind that box or whatever that is, uh, it's really hard to kind of win that fight. But we don't have TP, so I don't like this angle. Okay, better. Way better angle. I'm going to wide swing in this on TP. What are you on, Neon? Okay, I didn't mind the play. Uh, I actually thought that that crosser was on him. Surprised I didn't kill him. Oh, nice try. This was a tough one. I don't actually think like there was anything you could have done for this game. This was entirely a team diff, right? Sometimes like games like these do happen. No matter how well you would have played, you probably wouldn't have won this, right? Like that was unfortunate. However, I did notice a lot of mistakes regardless. So let me share my screen in and go over that. There was a little bit of times where there was some shaky aim, but of course, you know, first game of the day, you know, it could also be nerves too. So I'm not too worried about that, but definitely the position stuff, taking space. I also want to talk about lurking in general and playing more off angles and being a little bit more quiet with our play. A couple things here. I'm gonna talk about your mechanics first. So for mechanics, you had decent aim, really good flicks actually. You, you hit some really good shots. I'm not too worried about that. So sometimes I'm noticing with our burst, our, our burst is like kicking up like this. We're kind of letting it kind of go up and you want to avoid this. You want to make sure that you're pulling the burst down when you're doing this. Like I think there was one here in mid. Yeah, when you were fighting this Astra, I, I noticed like it kind of kicked up a little bit and I feel like if we just, our crosshair was all over him. So if we pulled down, I think one of our shots would have definitely hit him. Okay. Um, 
So just be a little bit more mindful of our bursting. And this is something you could just practice in the practice range. Just do like two two shot bursts and then let's just go f into four. You know what I mean? Like just to make sure that it's all around head level. Uh, and this just familiarizes ourselves with exactly how the gun control works. Then we can, you know, not have to think about it too much and it just comes like second nature. So, and another thing too for mechanics is quick peeking. So sometimes we do it, which is good where we come around the corner and we're ready for these fights. But sometimes I'm noticing we're not like, I think when we were walking into a main here and there was like two people here behind us and we were first point of contact, I did notice you were peeking like this. You know what I mean? So yeah. you don't, you want to avoid holding shift around corners like these because better players will play in like these off angles like this and then hold an angle like this. And what you want to be doing in this instance is you just want to come around the corner like this without holding shift, clear, clear. And then maybe then you can start walking up, clear, clear, boom, walk up and then we're going back into it. So this is something you should do a little bit more, um, especially with like certain off angles, because people will be playing in off angles, especially once you start going in higher ranks and they're going to start holding it, especially when they don't hear any sound. So that's definitely something I wanted to mention. And then on defensive side, you do want to, uh, as chamber, especially, and even when you're playing Gen Arena, you want to abuse off angles, right? Like off angles in general are really good to do. So this, this fight is fine, but you have to understand that like any agent could be playing from this spot. Like any agent can peek like this and take this fight, right? So because of that information, it does it, it drastically like decreases our advantage that we could be having because any agent is going to peek like this. So what you want to be doing instead is like at the start of the round, like I would throw maybe I throw a TP here and then I would throw the other one, um, you know, the walls here and then the second, you know, it drops, we go here. Um, and we play something like this. I like going here. I like going here to the wall, even if I don't have a TP for it. And that's because usually when people are going mid, uh, and again, this is if after I've already built like a habit of noticing like their play styles, like they like to run a default. When I notice they like to run a default, there's probably not gonna be like one mid, but this angle is not something that they're gonna come around the corner right away and start looking at, right? It's usually gonna be something that they pre-aim here and then you catch them off guard. So this yeah. is the kind of power that Chamber can bring. Chamber, Reyna, Jet, these kind of stuff, cause you can just dash out, just miss out after the kill. So one thing I wanna right. also mention too, is when we're holding angles, careful with the angles that you're choosing to hold so you you ended up holding an angle like this one time if you had to guess why would you think this angle is not good you get flashed and i have nowhere to get to cover okay i mean yeah that's a hundred percent true let's say you have your tp set up though like let's say that you do have this set up uh let me just move this here just to be so like this so let's say if they do flash us we can still tp out so another there's another reason i'm looking for anything you have anything that come to mind no I okay, don't. okay. All good, all good, all good. So the main thing is because they can jump on top of here, right? Mm -hmm. So if they jump up here and you're holding this angle, uh, you see what I mean? Ready. Yeah, your crosshair is not ready for this fight. And then you have to you have to flick up and they have the advantage because they're already looking at you, right? So always avoid angle these these sort of angles where you have to watch two things at once. Like here and here. Um let me think. Just trying to reduce the amount of like possibilities yes 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 absolutely this is another good example of this if they come heaven they have the jump on you you know what i mean and same with this angle i mean this angle is a little bit better because especially if you're playing chamber arena because they usually don't check this one so you could probably get one uh, and then kind of play it off but an obvious angle yeah this is not this is scary i i probably would would hold something like this right where it's like they're forced to come to this height or we take a more aggressive approach. Like we, we hold something like this, right? Where we kind of get to ignore heaven for a little bit and then just focus on, on this. So the main stuff that I noticed with the tax side is taking space. So there's gonna be two instances of this that I wanted to go over. One was gonna be when we're pushing into site and another one is like when we should be lurking and whatnot. So let's talk about taking site and taking space into site. So you do it some rounds, which is good. Like there's one round where we pushed in a site and your teammates planting and then you're using this time to kind of take space here and flower good this is very good to do i really like it especially when we're like even in numbers or we're even down numbers and you have to kind of go for a more an aggressive play or they give you the space for free so that's when it's fine to do this kind of play and when you're here just be careful not to like you know run up in, in this area right the second you run up in this area they're gonna immediately know where you are and your spot is ruined and it's not good anymore so what you want to do is make sure that you plant and then just walk up entirely get yourself in a spot like this and you are in a very good spot to win this round be very careful with what kind of information your audio cues give because it's very telling and higher 
elo players they're gonna hear one footstep and that's it that's a wrap you, you they know exactly where you are they know exactly what your play is going to be uh try not to give free info when i'm working basically yes yes when you're scaling up and taking space yeah try not to give free info it's very the information of where you're playing is the most important thing ever you know it, it don't worry about placing a tp here because th again this is another thing you place your tp here it's letting them know hey guys this is where that where i am right it's better to not even use any util and and take space up here and 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 like you know surprise them and catch them off guard than it is to kind of blow your util now when is it bad to do this when you're up numbers like if it's a 4v2 4v3 we don't have to go with this crazy play it's i wouldn't like blame you for doing it but it probably is better to i don't know maybe like just chill here and then just play around the spike or something like we don't have to take like an aggressive approach but if we we're even numbers and we caught him on a rotation yeah absolutely you want to take space because you put yourself in a position where i would give this like percentage wise like a 70 30 of you winning this because they're gonna be like this right and then they're they're gonna you're gonna catch them off guard because they're like oh my god he's already pushed a flower right the the element element of surprise is actually very huge in this kind of game when you're going into site you need some form of control okay so whether that's going to be yeah. art whether that's going to be flower whether that's yeah. going to be dug out especially if it's if they give you site for free so that's usually the scary part like if they play full retake and it's a 5v5 you guys get site for free and then you guys just all fall back into main this is scary this is bad you guys yeah. you know you're giving them way too much control yeah. where they have all yeah. three choke points and they're gonna 5v5 retake and you have only one to hold they smoke you guys off and then it's a mess right so you need to happens, hmm? uh whenever astro walled off a main uh we had four people there because we all backed up into it yeah so and i remember that so that yeah yeah like yeah we I, had people here. in art we're pushing up art we'd have yep. control of that yep and yep 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 or even okay. like dug out here that that would have just been like a really good thing to do also be very careful with how we're clearing this because like if you're clearing like this you know we're fully exposed from from back here right this is hard to clear i, I won't lie so it's gonna be something like this and then i'm gonna clear up close because when you're up here uh -huh. like you're not fully okay. exposed compared to here, right? Still on attack side, I want to talk about lurking. Okay, so we are good at going with our teammates and, and going as five, which isn't bad. But you have to understand that it starts becoming very telegraphed. Like if all five of you guys just group up every round and hit something, I'm going to, if I'm noticing this, I'm immediately going to be like, oh, they don't like the lurk. I'm going to fast rotate knife out through through areas and I'm going to beat them here and punish them for this show. So you just have to understand like how the enemy team is playing and then you just kind of adapt to that play style. And when you start doing that, you're going to start understanding, well, how your teammates are, are kind of playing and, and how you're just kind of falling into a routine. So going all five yeah. into A main every single time or all five into B yeah. main every single time isn't going to really work. If it is working, then keep doing it. But if you're like, okay, that didn't work. Let me just start lurking a little bit. It's very good on chamber. Lurking is very powerful on chamber because you can have impact with your trip. You can have TPs if you get in a weird spot. Yeah. I need to come to my teammates better. Uh, like if I think of, that i want to work i'll tell them all right you guys go a main uh, don't follow me mid yeah 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 I work it's it's place. it's one of those things where it's just like all right guys yeah go go be main let's do the same thing let's go be main except i'm gonna lurk and just don't commit and we're gonna rotate back so like ahead of time i'm telling them this right and yeah. I, I plant the seed of what the plan is going to be and then they make a lot of noise and i'm like wait guys guys fall back fall back because if you just lurk by yourself and then tell them to fall back they're probably yeah. gonna already commit because they don't know what you have in mind so just letting them know about this is very important with your lurks you do have to communicate very well ahead of time and i'm not too worried about it because i think your comms are actually very good so i do like that i just tell them like hey guys uh make a lot of noise b i'm gonna lurk up mid and then you guys are gonna fall off and then go back a so if that just ahead if it plants the seed they do whatever you you know you get a kill or something then you kind of like tp out then you could group up with your team and then go a or whatever or maybe like let's say that you you heard them yeah. all rotating this way and you're like okay guys come a right and now you're gonna try and take space instead of going for that one kill you know what i mean i would be like pushed up all the way up here or something and when they're rotating they're gonna be knife out right like you're gonna catch one here at least there's no way they expect you here you get one maybe you set up your tp after you get the kill then tp out or whatever but that's the idea that's the idea with the kind of pressure that you can have on a on attack side um for your team all right well best of luck in your rank games if you're playing any more today i'll probably play a few more nice nice yeah let me know let me know how your progress goes as well too I'd, I'd be happy to hear if you're interested in coaching yourself click the link in the description click the book a lesson button and select your plan in time so if you want to win free coaching be sure to comment down below your discord name without the hashtag and what you learned from the video i'll be picking out a person randomly